Hey what's up guys welcome to a brand new tutorial here on my channel and today we are gonna have a look how to create this super cool and interesting effect which I personally call liquid dispersion but you can call it however you want. As usual you can use any logo that you want and I'm gonna cover pretty much every single step that you need to achieve this but if you'd like to skip ahead and save some time I also made a fully customizable template where in just one main control panel you can change colors, tweak the blur, control the dispersion and so much more. Of course you can find a link where you can get this template down below in the description. But for those of you who want to learn the exact process, let's fire After Effects and go step by step. Let's start with creating a new composition. I'm gonna name it Main and we can go with 1920 by 1080 and 8 seconds duration. Everything else is fine. Let's press OK. And we can drag and drop our logo. I'm gonna use Apple logo, but of course you can use whichever you want. And let's immediately search for a fill effect and set it to white color just so we see that. We can also pre-comp it straight away. So right click on the logo, pre-compose and let's name it Logo Placeholder and make sure that Move All Attributes is selected and press OK. And now in the future, if you ever want to change this logo for something else, you will just go to this composition and just simply import your new logo and it, everything will automatically update. Let's go back to project and we are going to create the colored base for our logo. So let's go over here and create a new composition and I'm going to name it lines underscore main. The reason why I'm naming it like this, you are going to see a little bit later. Let's just press OK and I'm going to select a pen tool. I'm going to zoom out quite a lot and I'm going to make an extended line over the entire composition like this. Let's also reset the anchor point down to the middle of the line. So command or control and double click over here to reset it. And let's increase the stroke to let's say 20 like this. And now I'm going to press command or control D to duplicate it. And I will just start repositioning the line somewhere else and I will also play around with different thickness. So let's say this one can be 40 and I can put it over here slightly above. Let's again duplicate it and put this one let's say over here I can increase it to let's say 75 and then I can also search for a fast box blur and I can increase the blur to let's say 50 and I can duplicate it one more time and on this one I can decrease it to let's say 20 to have the middle a bit brighter uh, let's also duplicate this one and position it let's say like this just on the top of this line and then I will make a duplicate of the middle one one more time and I can put it let's say like over here and let's decrease that to let's say 6 to create a very subtle line like that Perfect, so that is our base. I can now take all of the shapes and press command D to duplicate them. I'm gonna drag them on top. We can also give them a different label color. So let's say green. And we can give these ones, let's let's give them white color. And now I want to reposition them either at the top or at the bottom. So it doesn't really matter. Let's say I can put them at the top like this. That's fine. It's gonna create a couple of other gradients like over here for example at the bottom which is cool. And I think what I can do in my case is I can take one more of this one and increase the fastbox a little more just so it blends a little bit better. And let's also take this top one and increase the blur just a tad more just to, so it blends a little bit better like this. Perfect. Um, now I'm going to layer new and add a null object and I will select all of the shapes and pattern them to the null. And now we can animate the direction in which we want these lines to go in. So in my example, I'm using a direction from left bottom corner to the top right one. So I'm going to use that. But of course, if you want, you can rotate it however you want and then animate the position which fits your logo the most. So let's put 40 degrees and then I will put it over here and having zero keyframes on the timeline, I'm going to press P. So the keyframe for position and then let's go to the end and put it somewhere like this. So we have just a basic position animation like so. And last thing that we are going to do in this composition, I'm going to press command option Y to create an adjustment layer. And first thing, I'm going to add another fastbox blur just so we blend everything one more time a little more. Uh, let's put, let's say 30. And then I will also search for a turbulent displace. And again, this is going to depend on your preferred style, but I'm going to increase it to 75 and the size to 150. Then we can also animate the evolution by pressing Alt or Option and type time asterisk 100. So the displacement is not completely static and it's also moving. So this is our base. Um, if you want, you can of course take this group again, duplicate it one more time and let's put it at the bottom and you can add a third color if you would like to. Let's give it maybe a nice purple color and we can also move these ones 
a little bit lower just so we add additional color and let's also give them a different label color one more time let's say this one and what i can also do is i can take let's say these three and i can drag them on top of everything so we have a little bit more of the purple color coming out on top of the other two so let's say like this and let's actually add one more thing and that is a black solid background so Control or command y let's select black color okay and let's drag it to the bottom of the comp and we can go back to the main composition and insert our lines main composition onto it as well so i'm actually going to put it at the bottom and we can take both of these layers let's select them by pressing shift and right click and let's pre-compose them and i will call this displacement let's press ok and let's go to the displacement composition and first i'm going to apply a layer style to my logo placeholder comp so let's right click layer style and select an inner glow and let's expand it and I'm going to set the blend mode to normal and I will also set the color all the way to black and if I now play around with the size you can see even though it's called inner glow I'm still basically adding a shadow so let's give it a size of 50 we can now close this layer and I'm actually going to pre-comp this one more time let's pre-compose and this one I'm going to name dispersion we can take the lines main composition and set a track mat onto the dispersion so the lines are masked out only onto the logo and the magic is going to happen when we search for a displacement map apply that onto the lines main composition and we set the source onto the dispersion and now play around with the max horizontal and max vertical displacement you can now see we are starting to get this dispersion effect and the key driver for this dispersion is the size of the inner glow so if i go back into the inner glow and i set the size to let's say 100 you can now see that the dispersion is going to be much bigger to my taste 100 is a little bit too much so i'm gonna leave it at 50 but of course let's say i decrease it to 20 then it's going to be way closer to the edges depending on your preference just pick a number that fits your logo and your scenario but i'm going to leave it at 50 let's go back to displacement and in the displacement map values let's leave it at minus 80 and the vertical let's go maybe 150 just make sure that you don't go too far because as you can see if i start going way too far then the logo is gonna start falling apart so yeah let's go with something subtle like minus 80 and 100 so this is what we got so far i think that's already working pretty well but we can still take this a little bit further so let's go back to the main composition and first thing i'm going to select the lines main i'm going to press command or Control d to duplicate them and this one i'm going to rename to lines underscore edges that's why we named the lines main before and let's drag the lines edges onto our timeline as well and we will pre-comp this one one more time so right click pre-comp and i'm gonna name this just edges and let's go into the composition and i'm going to add a logo placeholder on top like so and again we are going to set a track mat onto the logo placeholder but this time i'm going to invert the mask so now the lines are actually masked outside of the logo and i'm going to search for a cc globalize effect i'm gonna drag it onto the lines edges composition and in the drop down let's set the layer to the logo placeholder and then the property we will switch from lightness to alpha like so and you can see we are already getting nice edges so now it's going to depend on again the look that you are looking for but i would suggest you to not go a little too far with the softness especially if you have a multi-shape logo like this one you can i'm not a particular fan of this connection so i'm going to decrease the softness quite heavily to three and then i'm going to use the cutaway to define the thickness of it so i'm going with something like 12 i want it to be quite thin like this and subtle perfect and if you go back to the main composition you can see that we applied nice edges that follow the same reveal pattern because we used the exact line composition just rename it to edges so that's why we use the exact same one and one extra detail i'm going to add to the displacement layer is i'm going to right click and select a layer style and this time i'm going to add an inner shadow like so and if we expand it now we can again play around with the size you can see we are adding a little bit more of the depth along the edges in this case you can also play around with the angle but i'm gonna leave it at 120 because that works fine and i'm gonna set the size to 40 now we can close that 
and uh, we can just start adding some extra adjustment layers to make it look even better so first command option y to add adjustment layer we can rename this one to glow and we can search for a glow effect now it looks absolutely horrible so let's increase the threshold to 80 percent then the glow radius quite heavily to let's say 500 and also the intensity we can increase to let's say 3 so now we have a nice subtle glow all around the edges we can apply another adjustment layer and this time we can search for a noise let's disable the color noise and increase the percent to let's say 8% and we can also rename this to noise and the last thing we can go back to project and add a solid background at the bottom just to finish it off and this is the final result i think it's super clean and smooth but uh, i want to give you a couple other options how you can customize that so i'm going to just quickly switch the logo from apple to let's say nike uh, let's scale it down like so we can also switch the fill from the apple to the nike as well and if i go to main you can see it immediately applies that to the nike logo and for example, for the Nike one, uh, if I go to the lines main composition, we can select the purple colors. If I go here and select all label colors, now I have only the purple ones. We can switch it to, let's say, a nice greenish yellowish color. If you also don't want the logo to fade off like we have it now, then of course you can go to the null object. Uh, let's go, let's say to four seconds, and then you can set a keyframe and just delete the last one on the eight second, just so it doesn't continue outside of the composition. Of course, you can also adjust the amount of the turbulent display. So let's say increase that, but just make sure that you don't go a little too far once again, because as you can see, it's starting to break apart like this. So yeah, let's go maybe like this. I don't know, just make sure to preview it so there are no black islands. Okay, it, it looks fine. The same thing with the size, just make sure you don't go way too far. So I'm gonna leave it at 150 for this time. We can, for example, decrease the radius to 10. Again, we can immediately preview it by going to the main. It looks fine, but you know what? I'm actually going to decrease the amount to let's say 20. Uh, it's somewhat straight but you can see it doesn't really look straight at all because of the dispersion effect that we are having in the dispersion tab so over here we can maybe decrease the size of the inner shadow to maybe 15 let's go with 15 and now you can see it's nicely only on the edges however it's creating some stuff that we don't want to happen for example over here in the end letter you can see it's creating this sharp black part so let's go back to the edges and over here um, it's still having the same colors as we had previously for the apple logo so we will fix that later but now i want to fix the edges so we can just expand the softness maybe to something higher let's say six and we can also e decrease the cutaway to maybe six as well and yeah like i said we have to switch the colors so if you go to the lines main composition and just select everything like this command c to copy that and go back to edges lines edges let's just delete all of this and just command or control v and go back to main and now it applied the same colors so you can see this is a little bit of back and forth when it comes to working with the effects and applying it to the specific scenario that you have but yeah this is solved with the template that you can get in the description where there is just one main control panel so that was the exact step-by-step -step technique on how you can achieve this liquid dispersion effect other than that, thanks so much for watching. I really do hope that you learned something new and thank you for all the likes, comments and subscribes. It really means the world to me to see that you are enjoying these videos and you are getting something out of them. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to not miss any future videos and yeah, I'll see you next time.